Hi, welcome back to this video series on program synthesis. Today I'm going to synthesis um, a simple program that will tell me whether the most significant bit is turned on and that is the only bit that is turned on. So for example, if my input X is made of um, say four bit numbers, um, zero, one, one, zero, the program should give me zero as the answer because the most significant bit is turned off. On the other hand, if my input is uh, one, zero, 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 it should tell me one. But for this input, it should still tell me zero because there are, at least there is one more bit that is turned on, right? This bit is also turned on, so this is not okay. So we are only interested in, um, is the most significant bit turned on and, and no, on all other bits are turned off. That's, that's basically what we are interested in. Of course, this problem is easy to solve um, if you are allowed to use an if statement. But here we are not allowed to use an if statement. We are only allowed to use a, a few um, set of operators involving bitwise and or not. Um, and we are also allowed to use um, addition, uh, um, subtraction. Okay, so given this constraint, um, now I'm going to show you how we can synthesis a program using program synthesizer. Okay, uh, let's get it going. All right, so what you're seeing, which I will zoom in in a moment, is basically a grammar here. Here is the grammar. Um, the grammar says, okay, I need to synthesis a function um, which takes an eight bit number. Well, as I said earlier in my other videos, choosing a small bit vector size is good uh, to, to make it scalable. And um, that's the reason I'm doing it this way. What we're looking forward is here, uh, a program that will help us to, to answer this question uh, is the most significant bit turned on, and that is the only bit that is turned on. Okay, so we are allowed to use uh, bitwise add, sub, and or uh, other other bitwise operators. But as you can see, there is no if then else statement anywhere here. There is no ite anywhere here. Okay, so um, of course there are two routes we can take. We can formally specify what what we expect the program should look like, right? The, the specification, or we can also train by examples like we did in the past videos. Um, so I, as, I, as you can see here, um, I have a bunch of examples. And the only example where we have uh, the, the value one is when the most significant bit is turned on, okay? So uh, what it means in this case is uh, this way, right? What is eight zero in hex, um, eight zero in binary means one, zero, 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 and then zero, 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 zero. So here is the only bit that is turned on, therefore this is, uh, the program should return one for us. So we are training the computer essentially using examples. These are examples to train the computer, to come up with uh, a program for us, more generic abstract program, okay? Um, we are, we are um, actually in this case, we are also adding a specification just for fun. Um, if you don't like specification, you can leave them out, but you have to be careful with the, your samples, otherwise the program may only satisfy the samples, okay? Um, so what I did in this case is actually added a specification. Of course, in the specification, we are allowed to use if then else statements. So I'm saying very simple here. Um, the number A uh, is the input to the specification. Um, let me explain what it is doing, okay? Uh, so this part of the syntax has to be explained. This, let me write it in a more um, procedural language oriented syntax. What I'm doing here is I'm checking whether uh, A is equal to uh, 2 power 7, that's basically what I'm doing here. And 2 power 7 is nothing but uh, number 1. Um, you, you do um, uh, how many positions? You have to shift this 7 positions to your left. That's the reason I'm using shift left operator. Okay, so, so this is basically, if this is true, then the program will, uh, the specification will return 1, otherwise it returns 0. Now, Remember, this is spec, okay? And we are synthesizing another program called is only most significant bit turned on, okay? Now, we will let the computer to come up with a, a program which matches the specification as well as the examples. Um, you may wonder why did I have to write both spec and examples? Um, the answer is you don't have to do both. Um, spec is good to have. It, it's, it's great to have. In fact, if you have a good spec, then you may be able to synthesize programs. Uh, sometimes uh, writing spec itself is a painful thing. So if you have a bunch of examples from a different collection, 
um, it's much uh, easier uh, to to synthesize something meaningful. Okay, um, so so let's let's get it going. And by the way, uh, if you make some mistake in spec, and if your examples are um, are, are somehow uh, complementary to your spec, then you may be able to find some inconsistencies as well. That that's one reason you wanted to have examples wherever possible. Okay, so let's let's uh, run this thing and then see what happens. So I'm going to um, come online and, and run it for you now. So we will be first uh, running this program. Okay, in a, in in fraction of a minute, we got the output. What is the output? The output. Let me parse it for you. This is the function that we are synthesizing, right? The function name is is only most significant bit turned on. The input is x. The output is another uh, bit vector, which is zero or one. Um, as you can see here very clearly, whatever comes out from this expression, uh, we are throwing away all the uh, bits except the most significant bit. That's the reason why we are doing uh, right shift by seven position because we're dealing with the eight bit vector. So uh, the, the core logic then means that, um, uh, we just have to focus on uh, this part, right? What is the meaning of this part? Uh, this part says, uh, I'll take the X, input X, and uh, do a, a minus in the front, that's the meaning of BV neg, and then uh, do a bitwise and with this, right? So we are doing um, X and this bitwise and, okay? Minus X. So why would this give us the answer? Why would this, uh, of course I need to do, um, right shift by seven position, right? Uh, if your bit vector is uh, 32, you would be do, uh, replacing seven by 31 here, okay? So let me reason about this now. Why would this uh, help us? So this problem is um, interesting, okay? First, you have to think about what is the meaning of minus X from a bit vector perspective. Uh, minus X, let me use some examples to, to demonstrate this idea. So if your X is say, for example, I'm going to take a four bit number, easy to work with. Uh, one zero one zero okay what is the meaning of minus x minus x means you you compute um, complement of x first so you complete complement of x which is uh, zero one zero one and then you add one to it right so minus x means adding one to uh, uh, this this data that you're seeing so I'll put it here plus one right and uh, what is this plus one? We'll tell you zero, this is one, one, and zero. So minus six bit pattern um, and the plus X pattern has something interesting. You see here, this is one zero part. It comes as it is here, one zero. And the rest uh, are complement of each other, okay? Th this is not true just for this example. You can try many other example as well. Um, the the it preserves the exact pattern until the first uh, leftmost one, okay? If you start from here, you go until the first one, the exact same structure comes when you do minus X, and the rest are complement, okay? Therefore, let's think about what's the meaning of X and do minus X. Because the, the left portions are complements, they will cancel out, so you'll get zero when you do bitwise and. And uh, what, what is remaining now? Um, okay, in this case, what is remaining is basically, um, zero, zero, one, zero, right? And now we are throwing away, uh, we are working with four bit, that means you are throwing away three bits. This is this is the idea, the general generalization. So we are throwing away this, and we are left with only zero, which is the perfect answer because this is not the correct input X that the, the program should accept. Okay, so uh, let's take something good now. Let's take uh, an X, X to be like um, one, zero, zero, zero. What happens with minus X? So minus X means negation of X. Uh, first you have to do a bitwise complement. So zero, one, one, one. And then we need to add with the one to, to get the minus X. So it becomes zero, uh, zero, zero, one. This is basically what is the meaning of minus X. And we will be throwing away again, three bits. That's the meaning of uh, the, the right shift as I said earlier. And when we throw away this, we are get we are left with only one. This is perfect because this is the right input. Okay, you can try for others and and convince yourself this is this is the case. All right, so let's go back to the uh, program and do some more modification. Okay, 
Uh, what I'm going to do is, suppose, uh, let's argue that we don't like um, some of the operators, okay? Let's say we don't like uh, um, negation, negation operator, okay? Bitwise negation means minus. So what, what shall we do? Let me, let's go back and uh, just to change the, the grammar a little bit, right? That's the right thing to do. If you don't like something, change it. Um, okay, well, let's do this. Um, is only most significant bit turned on. Let me uh, put a comment on the negation part, right? We don't like that. So we will see what happens now. This may be a little uh, slower, but what we will see. Well, okay, we got immediately an answer. Uh, we got uh, bitwise and x, uh, well, this is, as I said, negation means minus in the front, and the, the program and synthesis are cleverly subtracted zero uh, with the x, that means it's same as minus x. So that's one other solution. Suppose we say we don't like uh, minus, uh, uh, we don't like subtraction. So we put that, we, we get rid of that. Semicolon in this language means comment. So this is going to take some time. Uh, but but we will see what what's going to come out. Okay, so we got another expression, which is um, x. Okay, let me write it for you. It's nothing but uh, what is the expression now? It's nothing but x bitwise and um, not of x. Okay, not means um, so to complement, right? Complement of x, each bit gets complement, and then we add a one to it. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know this earlier. I talked about the first video, um, and I know it's the same thing here. Um, we have x and the complement of x plus one. What is the meaning of complement of x plus one? Which means just minus x. Okay. So the same thing in multiple different forms, of course. Uh, so these are all different tricks you can play. Suppose you don't like some operators for whatever reason, um, you, you can try these kinds of tricks. Okay, so my main point for this uh, session is to show, it, show to you um, a few things. One is the, um, the, the idea that we can, first of all, synthesize a program that will uh, do this job for us. That's, that's uh, hopefully convinced at uh, this point. And, uh, um, Furthermore, you could you could use the idea of uh, combining spec as well as examples. Okay, so if, if you have a spec, you could put partial spec, uh, and you can complement it with the example as long as they don't contradict each other. Um, that way, you can sort of uh, um, uh, solve some of the specification problem. Okay, all right. Thank you very much for your attention. That's basically what I wanted to share to you.